Howdy. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce two-dimensional kinematics, okay? Now, I need you to be comfortable with 1D, because you know what? 2D, it's the same thing. It really, really is, okay? Um, you're still going to, just like back with 1D kinematics, first thing we're going to do is still write everything down, we're still going to set up our equations, and we're still going to understand what the question is, and then see what it's asking for and solve for it. The only difference is that you're um, going to split up your X component information and your Y component information, okay? You're going to treat the X and Y components completely separately. And what's going to happen is each component is going to be used to help each other solve for the other problem, okay? Um, but besides that, it's really just more of the same. And so that's why I like the way that uh, our strategy for attacking it is because I don't care what type of kinematics problem you have, whether it be 1D, whether it be 2D, whether it be easy or whether it be nuts, it's still the exact same strategy. So let's take a look at an example. That way you can see what I mean by that. So for number one, this is that Peyton Manning throws a football with an initial upward velocity component of 12 meters per second and a horizontal velocity component of 20 meters per second. And we're going to ignore air resistance. Part A, how much time is required for the football to reach its highest point? Part B, how high is that point? Part C, how much time after it's thrown is required for the football to return to its original level? And then part D, how far has the football traveled horizontally during that time? Okay, so it told me that uh, V naught in the Y direction had an initial upward velocity of 12 meters per second, and V naught in the X direction, an initial horizontal velocity component of 20. Now, what I'm gonna do is just like we did with 1D, we need X naught, we need V naught, but this time in the X, and we need acceleration. And we need that for both. And what's going to happen is, is once I find all six of these constants, all we're going to do is just like last time, throw it into these equations, and we're going to utilize the equations to help us answer the problem. So, what we'll do is we'll set the football, his initial position throwing it, we'll call it the origin, and so x naught and y naught, we can make that zero. v naught in the x direction, they told us was 20. And acceleration in the x direction, this will always be zero, unless otherwise specified. Acceleration in the x direction, say that again, will always be zero, unless otherwise specified, okay? Now, the initial velocity in the y direction is 12. And just like with 1D kinematics, acceleration in the y direction is 9.8. But what I'm going to do is let's set to the right positive x. We'll set up positive y, which means since acceleration is pointed downward, negative 9.8. Now, setting up our equations like last time, xf is equal to x0, which is 0. v0, t is just 20t. Okay, so that's my x. There's no reason to really find velocity in the x direction. It's just 20. It's a constant 20. Let's talk about yf. yf, it's equal to y0, which is 0. v0, t, which is 12, t, plus 1 half a t squared minus 4.9 t squared. So there's my y, um, uh, I guess, position function. And finally, the velocity in the y direction is simply the derivative of this, or just v naught y, which is 12, plus at, negative 9.8t. Once I have these equations, now what I'm going to do is I can mentally take a step back, really read each question, and basically figure out what I'm looking for. And so in part A, it says how much time? How much time is required for the football to reach its highest point? Well, just like I talked about with 1D kinematics, the time that it takes to reach its highest point is when the velocity is equal to zero. More specifically, the velocity in the y direction is equal to zero. I don't care what the x direction is doing. It really 
doesn't matter. You can treat the user, you're supposed to treat the x and y is completely independent of each other. And so for part a, I'm going to first find out when, let's figure out when the velocity in the y direction is equal to zero, and then plug that into my position for the y. And so it's yf that I'm looking for when vf in the y is equal to zero. So zero is equal to 12 minus 9.8t. And so, doing a little bit of algebra, we can solve for t. Doing 12 divided by 9.8, we're going to get 1.22. So I'm going to say that it takes 1.22 seconds in order to reach its highest point. Now, oh, and that's part A. How much time does it take to reach its highest point? It's part B that says how high is that point. Well, part B, if I want to find out how high that point is, we're just going to plug that 1.22 seconds into my position. So this will be 12 times 1.22 minus 4.9 times 1.22 squared. So let's go ahead and plug that into our calculator. And so, uh, let's see, we're going to have 12 times what we just found minus 4.9 times 1.22 squared. And we do that, we get 7 point, we'll call it 7.35. So 7.35 meters will be how high that point is. Part C. How much time after it is thrown is required for the football to re return to its original level? Well, what did we talk about previously with 1D kinematics? The time that it takes to get to its highest point is the exact same amount of time that it takes to get back to the original point. So, literally just take your 1.22 seconds, the time that it takes to get to its highest, times 2. So 2.44 seconds. And now that I know how long that it took, or how long it's actually in the air, part D, how far? How far has the football traveled horizontally during this time? Well, for part D, if I want to find out how far it traveled horizontally, I'm just going to plug this 2.44 into your position in the x direction, okay? Um, and so, your final position in the x is equal to 20 times 2.44, which we'll just call that 40.88. That's what I'm saying. By attacking kinematics like this, it's no different whether it's 1D or 2D. Still utilize the foundation that we set up back with the 1D kinematics. Still set up your, um, write everything down, set up your equations, and then just start picking them apart. Just start figuring out what they're looking for and utilizing which equation you need. Okay, let's get a touch harder, okay, because now this was more of just a lesson to show you how it's done. Now in the next two problems, let's actually start solving some stuff. So the second problem is about a medium type problem, and then let's get difficult. But I don't care if it gets difficult, because you know what? I'm still going to be doing the exact same thing.